president of the tool library. And I am a basketballer. And I am just a kind of loser out here. <laughs> And 
And there's a little video. These are clips from uh, the Tool Library Board went down in Portland. They knew the village building convergence, which is really similar to what we're, well, what we're doing is modeled a lot of after what they've done down there. They're in their like eighth year. They've been in for a while. Um, and now they have about 40 sites, but initially it was a lot smaller, and that's kind of where we want to start off. So we've been talking a lot about you know, throwing around the number of <coughs> 10 sites. So I think Lauren's got a video. Hopefully the speakers. city repair principles that we have been applying across the geography and social spectrum of our city. The USA has the fewest outdoor gathering places per capita of all first world nations. Our work challenges the dominance of civic space by automobiles and at the same time transforms the spaces of streets and intersections into places of activity and connection, bringing people outside of their homes to design, fund, build, and then inhabit gathering places that reflect the local vision and body sustainable ideas. Toward a more sustainable future, our work brings people out of isolation so that they can design their own solutions. Our impact has spread to dozens of cities across the continent. Thank you. Um, 
And then we're going to help plan the event in July. Um, Lauren's doing a lot of the coordination for parts of this uh, project. So the committee offers that to site hosts and people that are interested. And also the Vancouver Tool Library has a big communication network that's going to help promote this as much as we can. Um, and we have a great network of volunteers that would like to come out and be a part of this as well. Uh, and we'll work to get as many tools as we can. Members of the Tool Library have to use those tools to work on projects. So the event timeline, uh, site applications for those that are interested. Um, if you know someone that's not here tonight, um, and please make sure that your email is down on the feed. Lauren's going to be sending around the site application an email uh, so <coughs> people that should, might be interested. Um, we'll choose the site's April 17th, and then the training weekend is the 18th to the 20th of May. Uh, Southlands Farms, I'm sure most of you haven't been there, but there's a number of permaculture projects down there, cob ovens and cob structures, and uh, it's a small scale, really small scale farm. Okay. farm. They have a, it's pretty big, great big. Two of them small apartments in Vancouver. Um, and then preparation in June, including a lot of the solicitation of materials. Um, the Tool Library has partners, so hopefully we'll be working with the solicit materials that are drawn up in that training weekend. Um, and then the week of July 8th is the build. This, uh, this timeline is in the application form, so don't worry about getting the dates down. Uh, I think we've also, I think we've talked too much about other things that will be going on during that week. Uh, Village Building Conversions tries to bring a, a lot of um, leaders that have done similar projects to talk about their experiences or just put on events that allow the community to have a presence uh, through education and skill sharing. Uh, and that is planning to happen at night. So we're still working on kind of securing some people to talk and uh, kind of the music that would go on at night and tell the operations that would happen. So, site hosts. Um, As a site host, you'll be responsible for um, the bulk of your project plan, and we'll definitely assist you with that. You'll be responsible for coming to your training weekend. Um, you are the leadership role, you are the representative of um, our committee um, in your neighborhood, and you're also a representative for your project. Um, so, come to the training. Um, you, you learn some things that you can apply later on and then come to the, to the event um, with your project plan, all of your um, volunteers stuff. lined up. Volunteers yeah. lined up. Stuff. Stuff. Volunteers, you will see um, snacks, organize, you know, things like that. Uh, so also, you know, you, if you don't have a site uh, in mind or you think it will be hard for yourself to have a site, We'll be sending around, once we've settled on the sites that fit our criteria and also have an enthusiasm, etc., cetera, um, we'll send those around. We'll publish them. We'll say, hey, this is the event and how it's going to look. And that allows you, who might not have access to a site, to become kind of a member of the site team um, and help plan that project. Uh, and then. When it's going on, it's going to be pretty busy. Um, so, you know, the site hosts might not be available for five days, and they might ask members of their site team to be there for certain parts of the project as they get built. Any questions so far? You <coughs> talked about doing ten projects this, this year. Have you already got a bunch of projects that, that are? more or less shaped that you envision happening, or? We have, some, we have some ideas, but no specific projects. Like, yeah, we have ideas, but what we're here to explore today is ideas, and also hopefully people come out of this with a site for that idea to happen from today, and, and we'll see that April 10th when the applications do. I think there's a number of sites that, I mean, I think it was big, and there's a lot of great people here today that probably have some sites that they like to see developed in more of a public place. Yeah, um, our, our, can I add to that? Our goal is definitely to get the projects and the sites where the project's happening coming from 
you guys and others in Vancouver, not that the City Commons Committee comes up with them. So we want this to be driven by Vancouverites, not us. That was more a question about whether there were a number of groups that had already been in touch with this. No, this is the first. Yeah. 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 I'm not very familiar with the regulatory framework in Vancouver for intervening in public safety. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get into some of that criteria in a second. It's also outlined in the application. Um, so yeah, the, so here it is. <laughs> uh, so you know, we'll look at the the capacity to build, um, and not only soliciting the materials up until July, but also within the five-day time frame that the project will be taking place. Is can that site be built within that time frame? We want to make sure that all of the activity happens within that. Preparation can happen beforehand, and final touches can be added afterwards, but we really want to make sure that most of that building and involvement happens within those five days. If it's a 20-day project, it will fit in the criteria for the capacity for it to happen. Um, People's connection, so not only their right to access and build on that property, which is an issue, um, but it's also, you know, looking around with the, you know, can do they, can they do they have support from their neighbors in in the way this is going to be built and um, does it fit well within the neighborhood? Uh, types of materials we talked a lot about ecological building materials. We're trying to have you know, reuse material and also uh, some natural, like cob building materials used in most of the projects we're working on. And then, yeah, need in the neighborhood, it probably will happen only when, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to see as many projects happen as possible, but the, the need for such a project and its impact would also be considered. Um, so quick, sorry, go back for a second. Um, and to, sorry, to put you on the spot here. Your comment around, uh, we talked about public and private space, and just kind of the guidelines for private space. Guidelines. Well, as long as you have a good relationship with your neighbors, I don't see any problems, but if you're always fighting with your neighbors, then anything you do, Kind of yeah, and there's also, I mean, there's a certain height that building structures on your property can be up to before you need certain permits. So, we're, you know, a lot of what will be considered is um, the size of the project as well. Um, and if it's encroaching on kind of public space or <coughs> other people's space, uh, it'll become more of an issue. So, Little tiny benches. <laughs> Little tiny stools, all the stools. Um, but that's in the site allocation as well. So these are just some examples um, from around, you know, that just been posted. And, uh, so I'm trying to get the juices flowing for you guys because we're going to break out after this to talk about ideas you have for building public place in Vancouver. The cob bench there on the right it was one of the examples that Chris was talking about that was ecologically material based. Right, Chris? Yeah, and there's one at 13th and St. George that was built last year on a park property, which is really great. That's cool. Public art, we've seen this in Vancouver. Little libraries, George talked about the St. George Lending Library and St. George. Um, there's also one in Woodlands in Adnac, I think. Um, <coughs> I think most people know 18th and I think it's Ontario, Ontario yeah, where there's uh, the chess set. So just get the juice flowing around what we're talking about. But it, it's community driven, so if you don't see something here, it doesn't mean that can't happen. We're just trying to show you some examples of what's been done in projects like City Common before. Yeah, that's it.
So I'll do some more questions. Yeah. Um, that is, it's 
one who's 100 square feet in the city um, allows you to build on your one. But like Yenza kind of touched on before is the city, <coughs> let me say this. Um, it's a lot about how it fits into your neighborhood mm -hmm. and with your neighbors. And if your neighbors are happy and usually <laughs> you know, and I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> like a good example is like Parade of Lost Souls, right? So like the six months to a year before Parade of Lost Souls, you just knock on everyone's door that the craziness is gonna go through. And all those people are like, sure, we'll let you use our power at our house, right? So like it goes that whole extent, right? It's like yeah, there's like lots of legalisms, like technically you're like this whole gathering is against the law. Like the idea of like making place in like, you know, places that aren't supposed to be a place. It's just supposed to walk by it quickly. You know, it's like don't do that, right? Because it's not, you know, increasing the economic whatever of the, you know. But the, the anyway, sorry. I've been rambling when I've been talking too much today. But anyway, um, so what Pretty Lost Souls is like you, you meet everybody in your neighborhood and you ask them to get them to sign off on something and they might actually contribute something to what you're building. So, so yeah, um, I think if roadblocks come up, it's just good to acknowledge them, but not to worry about them in advance. So is that sort of the is that sort of the like momentum you guys are like thinking about, like the sort of like ask for forgiveness, but make sure you ask before you ask, you know, like double <laughs> ask, quadruple ask, yes please. And, then and I think I think you know we're starting with like with a handful of projects, and we hope that in the year we come, you know, we'll start to see the precedent and show that it can work. Uh, we, me and Travis spoke with one of the people behind the cop bench at 13th in St. George. And she said, well, the city, all they would talk about is, what are you going to do with it once it's built? <laughs> <laughs> like, how are you going to get the leaves off of the bench? And like, how are you going to keep it clean? And what if it sinks? And like, stuff like that. So I think, you know, we, we want to be careful that uh, the projects we choose uh, we put a lot of thought into and, and set a good precedent yeah. so that, that when they start to populate the city a little more, people are noticing them. There's good precedent, they're well made, they're well kept, they're well used. And the roadblocks that the city presents will offer us a lot of chances to ask questions and challenge the things that um, some of the standards or regulations that the city puts forward in a way that I have some things to say, but I'm, I know we're going into a great break of the debate, right? so I want to make sure that... Uh, How are you going to present? A couple more questions. Is there a budget for materials? Or when we build these projects, are we taking on the responsibility of getting those materials donated? Depending on the materials, it's hard to say. Um, Is there I any think money at all? Like a grant funding or anything? We... Oh, okay. the tool library, sorry? Yeah. The tool library has put forward, um, oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> we're funding a little bit of like the coordination of the project, but that's about it, and, uh, and some of um, like the promotion and that kind of material. Uh, it's so, no, the, we're really trying to leverage our organization to work with, you know, kind of like Habitat and Restore to get materials. Like, when the tool library first started, we had a ton of lumber donated that helped build some of the structures we have, like some of the shelves we have inside. And so we're hoping to leverage that too. I know the tool library has any fasteners or glue you can possibly need. <laughs> uh, we have tons of We're also suggesting that people use uh, maybe reclaimed or found or used materials that are already available for materials. It seems like there's a good synergy opportunity down here because all neighborhoods have access to the neighborhood small grant program. Yeah, it's just it's tight because most of them are under application deadlines for March 30th. So it's like think through your site and, and put in your neighborhood small grants yeah, project which is fifty to five hundred dollars. Yeah, the the only challenge with the small grant and it is it's just bad timing with the the date that we are the application deadline to get your application in to us to city comments is after the deadline for the small grant. So yeah, if I would say if anybody is gonna apply for a neighborhood small grant, then just be aware that if your project doesn't get submitted, you'll 
or sorry, selected for city commons, you still will have the <laughs> obligation to your neighborhood house to complete that project. So that's a new question a little bit more as well. Um, I guess we're also creating a network of people, so any grant opportunities that come up, you know, will be forwarded to the group of site hosts. So um, by everybody, you know, and we'll work together to make enough money to make the project run. And yeah, we so have one grant actually in the We've applied for a yeah. yeah. And you some of that if we're successful would probably go to like a material stipend for each of the projects, but we don't always get it. When will we find out? I just one more comment on the future on the budget. Um, it's at the end of the training weekend. We're going to do a fundraiser, so we're going to hopefully have designed all the sites by the end of that weekend, and then people can come down and fundraise. We also threw around the idea of we get an application. The huge go for it. We were thinking we could erect those on like future sites of all city college oh, yeah, projects and stuck the link in some fundraising into that as well. This thing called crowdfunding maybe, I don't know if you heard of it. <laughs> yeah, Julie? Have you heard of Gridball? I have, yeah. Have you, have you guys thought of farming at that? Uh, I sat down with Ben and Gridball is just a software to link community volunteers to projects and Adrian Sinclair is also in the back there. Working on a similar project, I don't think Goodbond will be ready in time. Uh, they have a really aggressive timeline. So like two months, we have database, no problem. So I don't know. I kind of I said to Ben, let's see how your project goes and if it's successful. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
into sort of mosaics that complement the natural surroundings. Thank <laughs> you. 